Hello everybody, I would first like to apologize for the lack of quality of editing for this video. I was trying to get it out as quickly as possible, so that's why not much work was put into that. Um, secondly, obviously this is an analysis of every page um, of the rabbits by John Marsden and Sean Tan. Thirdly, a little disclaimer, obviously I do not own the rights to this book. It, it was written, as I've just said, by John Marsden and Sean Tan, and it was published by somebody. Oh, I do not know. And it was published by Lathean Children's Books. So they are the ones who own the rights to this. Everything, uh, any opinions expressed in this are my own. Um, and I've had no other influence on this. Finally, any information that I am to share in this video is based on my study of this book. And just to end off, I will be looking over at my laptop occasionally because I have some of the analysis on there. So here we go, uh, The Rabbits by John Marsden and Sean Tan. I will open up and I will go double page by double page. So here we go, we have the first double page here. This is the first page of the book and we see quite a few things and motifs that will come along uh, throughout the rest of the book here on this first page. So firstly, the salient image here, it is this uh, lizard or snake, however you would like to interpret it, at the bottom of the page it gives us an offer gaze off towards this image in the bottom right corner. Uh, this uh, is an offer gaze which uh, offers us the opportunity to look where it's looking and it also draws us a vector or a line of sight over to there. Now I just forgot to remind everybody but this will be a lot easier for you if you haven't had the book uh, with you at home. If you can follow along with the book it'll make it a whole lot easier to understand all of this. So we can see that vector or salient, salient image, the vector from the salient image uh, with the offer gaze looking over towards this smokestack. Now this is a motif that we will see come about many times throughout the book. If you're unaware, a motif is a, re is a repeated symbol, uh, which often conveys some sort of meaning. So here we see this smokestack. This is a symbol or a motif of the rabbits generally, as well as their industrialization, advancement in technology and pollution. We also see the motif of these birds fleeing. This will come about many times throughout the rest of the book. And it's a symbol that birds have uh, built into them biologically, a system where they, they will fly away to avoid danger. And this is showing them fleeing from danger in the bottom right corner, which appears to be the rabbits. As well as this, we see that everything at the moment is quite a natural colour. We have a very bright and vibrant sky and a nice earthy and rich colour of both the ground here and the cave. And then the final thing that we see, which may be hard to pick up on camera, but we have little fossils of what are dead numbats in the cave to symbolise the amount of time that they have been there. So then we move on to the text, which says, The rabbits came many grandparents ago. There's not all that much there. It's written very simply, as is most of the text in this book. But the second line in particular is what I want to look at, where it says, Many grandparents ago. This explains how the uh, time system that the numbats use is very, very uh, fluid, and they don't use a rigid time system, which is in contrast to what the rabbits do, as we will see later in the book. They are very focused on efficiency and time, and clocks become a motif. So onto the second page. This page can often be called the first meeting, um, and it's, it's quite a useful page in understanding how this story begins. So this is the first time that we see the numbats, or the rabbits generally, um, and it is the, the first meeting between these two groups. A big part of this page is the symmetry that we see. There are the same number of numbats and rabbits, and they are doing the exact same thing. As well as this, their size is the same. And as we will see later on in the book, size of the rabbits gets distorted to uh, show their overwhelming nature of the numbats. In terms of visual techniques as well, uh, we see that uh, the rabbits, this is the first sign of their um, techno uh, technologized, that's not a word, of their technological advancement and we see the rabbit here coming up on a on some sort of vehicle where we see the mirrored number on this side just standing on a rock. Uh, finally in terms of this page we have two more things. We see the first signs of the rabbit's destruction of the land with these tracks made by the vehicle causing a, an imprint on this land that will stay there and then also we see that the side of the page with numbats is lighter and the side of the page with the rabbits is darker, showing their impact on the land. So in terms of the text, it says, At first we didn't know what to think. They looked a bit like us. There weren't many of them. Some were friendly. Again, quite simple, almost as though a child had written it. 
Um, and that's called it. So that is sort of how this book is written to sound like it's quite simplistic in in its writing. However, it does contain some deeper meaning. And one part that I think has some deeper meaning here is um, they looked a bit like us. So the idea here is that there's a gap in communication. They're quite similar, but they're not exactly the same, which can cause some disparities between these two groups, which will come up later. And then finally, at the end here, we have some were friendly. I think this is very important because it also signifies that some were not. So the next page here can often be called the science page or surveying the land or something to that effect. And this is where we see the, the rabbits coming in and uh, looking at the land. And we also see some interesting relationships building between the rabbits and the numbats. So the salient feature here is this rabbit in the centre. He's looking at a lurid green orb. And lurid green is a lovely, uh, lovely word to use here because we can use it and talk about how that is contrasted with the rich earthy colours that we see in the rest of the land. So what we can see here is that all of these rabbits appear to be carrying out scientific experiments. We can see a lot of numbers and measurements and there's writing down the bottom of the page and there's a sketch over here. We also see a rabbit up in the top right corner, uh, sorry, in the top right corner of the left hand page and we see him with some sort of telescope taking measurements. This appears to be the page in which we can see that the rabbits are tr uh, looking to see what they can do with the land. We also see it down here all of these little things that look like dead native animals, which could show the immediate impact that the rabbits are having on the land. We see that um, one of the rabbits is putting a lizard into some sort of fluid, which could, uh, ex could uh, explain sort of the testing that they are trying to do. And finally, in the top left corner here, we see a rabbit teaching two numbats about a cog. So this is where we see quite a positive teaching relationship, which we hadn't seen much throughout the, throughout the book so far, and we won't see much of it throughout the rest of the book. It looks like there's a positive relationship occurring here in which there is teaching going on, and it looks like it's working out very well for both sides. And so again, we can sort of still see here that the colours of the book are very nice, and they, they look quite natural, and how they did at the start of the book. However, we see another motif here of the symbolic tear of the page. This is where we have a section of the page, or in a page coming up later, most of the page is covered up by this tear. The tears are a motif within this book to symbolise a flash forward in time. We can see here that rich earthy colour is gone. The page is now brown, and brown is a colour that symbolises the rabbit's impact on the land throughout the rest of the book. We also see something which is quite disheartening, which is this cog left here which shows not only the disregard for the land in terms of littering, but also a disregard for what was a positive teaching relationship on that side of the page. Again, we see the tracks up here of the vehicle that the rabbits use and the tracks of the numbats when they're walking. And we can see that these diverge, showing that these two groups have gone their separate ways. So in terms of textual analysis on this page, we see it, it reads, but our old people warned us, be careful. They won't understand the right ways. They only know their own country. So this is quite important um, in how it's trying to say, so firstly, be careful. This is a warning and it shows the dangers uh, that the elders are expecting the rabbits to bring. As well as this, the line, they only know their own country, is a big part of colonisation and the issues that surround it when you come into a place and you don't actually know enough about it, but you believe that you can take over very easily. Then at the bottom it says more rabbits came. This is a symbol which is basically just showing that the numbers of rabbits are slowly getting higher and higher, which will slowly start to overwhelm the numbats. So on the next page we see this one, which is the same as on the front cover. And essentially what this, what this page is, is it's a depiction of the first fleet. A big part of what Sean Tan did when illustrating this book is he didn't want it to directly symbolise Australian colonisation because he wanted it to be reminiscent to all forms of colonisation so that it wouldn't lock in the audience for the book. However, this is quite clearly um, a symbol of Australian colonisation. So to analyse this, it's mostly visual because there's not that much text up here. So actually, I'll start with the textual analysis. So at the bottom, it just says they came by water. That is the only text on this page and it doesn't have that all that much meaning, uh, meaning to it. It just is explaining where all these new rabbits came from. So in terms of the, uh, the visual analysis, the most salient feature here 
is either the ship or the flag. And either way, they draw a vector to each other. So in terms of the ship, it's the biggest feature on the page. And the low angle that we're placed at makes the ship look even more dominant. The ship is quite brightly coloured and it looks almost golden. Um, and what Tan has tried to do here is depict the unbelievable scale of the ship that it must have looked like to the numbats. In terms of the rabbits here, we also see quite a, quite a few things about them. Um, so we see that there's a clear social hierarchy. We see this rabbit front and centre, who is in a different uh, in different clothing to all of the other ones. He has the biggest hat, and he appears to be dressed in uh, some sort of gold accents, showing power. We also see, see writing on their uniforms, which shows the importance of language to them and written language, which we will see later. Now, what could also be argued to be the most salient image is a motif that we will see many, many times throughout the rest of the book, and that's this flag. So the flag of the rabbits has arrows pointing out in all directions. This symbolises their view on colonisation in how they want to expand out in every direction. So this flag will come up a lot more. We also see a clock, which again, as I've said, will come up a lot more. Finally, we see two numbats in the right side of the, of the page. And as I said before, the size of these people get distorted over time. So the numbats are now far, far smaller than these rabbits in the middle of the page. So then we move on to this page, which is the utopian view, according to the rabbits, of what they want their city to be like. So we see, firstly, that the numbats have been forced up to the top of the page only. They are only involved in this top strip. This represents their displacement and, the way of, and how their way of life has been rejected. So in terms of the utopian rabbit city, which is in the middle of uh, our thing, so we have the golden frame as well as the sort of golden-based artwork, which is the salient feature. And the gold, recommend, uh, sorry, the gold references wealth and prosperity. As well as this, the warmth seen, uh, seen in the frame almost creates uniformity, and we can see it's got a rigid outline of several, several uh, uniform buildings as well. Um, as well as this... There's an effective use of space uh, in the sense of these buildings are very, very close together. As we will see throughout the rest of the picture book, the rabbits are all about efficiency, both time-wise and spatially. And we can see that these buildings have been put so close together so that they can fit as many in as possible. However, it's not all happy, happy and dandy for the, for the rabbits. As we can see, it's already not turning out like they want it. We see in here beautiful, not, not exactly beautiful buildings. They look like they've come right out of Ikea. Um, but yes, they have uniform buildings with just a flag on top. But here we can see the colour is different. So outside of the frame is reality. We can see the colour is different and there's smokestacks and cogs and all this stuff on the top. And so it's already turning out not like what they wanted. So as I, as I just said, again, we have the smokestack motif. And we can also see that it appears to be built almost as like a jigsaw. This shows, um, this shows again the uniformity and how they're almost flat pack buildings. Uh, so this is just a symbol generally of the industrialization that we see. One other thing that's important in this frame is we can see a, a rat that appears to be an introduced species eating a lizard in the bottom right corner. It looks robotic, which again becomes motif of the uh, introduced species. As well as this, we see a lizard which has just been killed and squished by this frame, which shows the sheer disregard that the rabbits have. Um, yeah, shows the sheer disregard for the uh, for shows the sheer sheer disregard that the rabbits have for the landscape. Right. So uh, after that, we have the textual analysis for this bit. Uh, so we have up the top in the number section. They didn't live in the trees like we did. This shows that the rabbits have no connection to the land which is a big part of how the numbats live. We also see down the bottom, um, we couldn't understand the way they talked, which is a big gap in communication, and it's one of the first times that we see this directly written down, which will come, a bit, uh, which will come about a lot more throughout the rest of the novel. So we move on now to uh, this next page, which could be called the introduction of sheep and cattle, or just generally an introdu uh, introduced species page, or maybe a farming page. So, uh, just to go around firstly on the visual techniques, we see up here an exaggeration of a sheep's teeth. It, they're robotic and they're very large uh, to show how much of the land they're eating. As well as this, we can see that the, sh uh, the sheep are branded 
which shows that they go straight for consumption and to the butcher. We see this as well as uh, on the cattle as with how they're marked with the cuts that a butcher would make. So again, we can see that uh, the efficiency here is incredibly important to the rabbits and all they want is to get this all done as quickly as possible. Uh, so the next thing that we see up the back, again on the idea of efficiency, is how tightly packed each of these things that have been produced are. I think that's milk or potentially alcohol, sheep, uh, maybe logs, and then cattle. They are stacked on top of each other, which is again the efficiency that we see. So then we have another symbolic tear here, which again, as I said before, is a flash forward into the future. We have a colour shift here. So this is now brown, whereas this were very uh, bright and vibrant colours. However, this side does look very artificial in colours. They're very bright uh, and it, it makes it seem like it's an introduced grass, which it probably is. As well as this, this is contrasted with the earthy colours that we normally see and the mi it mimics the lurid green from the science page. Um, so we see, uh, we see back on this side of the page that there's the constant milking of cows and we see they're all constantly hooked up to the milking machines, which again is on the idea of efficiency. Efficiency is a big thing in this page. Um, so on, uh, on this even smaller tear within here, we can see, um, we can see a number is handed a, a bottle which could be alcohol, and it probably is, and this symbolises the devastating impacts of the introduction of alcohol uh, into the Indigenous communities of Australia. So in terms of textual analysis on this page, uh, we hear they brought new food and they brought other animals. We liked some of the food and we liked some of the animals, but some of the food made us sick and some of the animals scared us. So... On the ter uh, in terms of the summer, but some of the food made us sick, we see that it's a brown colour, almost reminiscent of feeling sick. And then we also see that the words made us sick are upside down, which could mimic the nauseating nature and a feeling of queasiness. Um, again, we see, and some of the animals scared us. This shows that numbats are now uh, hiding and running away and that they are scared of these new animals that have been introduced, showing the impacts on the numbats personally. So onto the next page, we have this uh, page right here, which is could also be called more of a surveying the land page, page, but obviously you wouldn't want to have the same name. So we see quite a bit on this page in terms of the rabbits and how they act. So the sky we can see here is still a fairly natural colour, and there's a lot of stars there, which are quite nice. Again, however, it does look that to, to be that lurid green, which is slightly unnatural, um, which, as I said, is a motif of that. Um, so we see up here along these power lines the repetition of these flags. Again, the flags are a motif which shows the constant expansion wanted by the rabbits, and the flags here are placed there to show the ownership. We also see a clear disregard for the taking care of the environment. As we can see, these pipes could very easily have been moved around these mountains. We see, we see three pipes on the page going directly through mountains, which show uh, not only the disregard for these mountains and their and their well-being, but also it shows the skill in technology to be able to just take a slice straight out of a mountain, which does show some of the uh, technological advancements of the rabbits. We also see uh, with some contour lines, rabbits mapping out the terrain to show what it could be used for. Um, and we also see that uh, the idea that efficiency and speed are incredibly important in how they have just cut directly through the mountains instead of just um, yeah, instead of just working around them or, or moving the pipes off to the side. Uh, so we see now as well down at the bottom that there is only one numbat who is down in the bottom right corner here and who is very, very small. And as I've said multiple times, the distortion in size is a big part of this. And we can see that the numbats are now far fewer in number and are far smaller. So we see here, uh, th this is the salient image in here, and we can see the sort of social structure of the rabbits here. They're having a meeting, and again we see the flag motif in the middle, as we can see their flag almost looks like battle plans. They appear to be meeting, and then we can see two rabbits in the middle here, almost cheersing, which shows that they are proud of their advancements technologically, and sort of proud of their destruction of the land. Um, and so we can also see finally that the teapots are shaped like the rabbits, which shows their vanity a bit. And we can see that they're extracting the natural resources for their benefit, as we see 
that tea, the pipe that is uh, filling up the teapot has come directly from these new major pipes. Uh, so in terms of the text on this page, we see the rabbits spread across, across the country. No mountain could stop them, no desert, no river. This here is anaphora and a tricolon, which just means basically that it has three parts, and it shows the extent of uh, the damage that the rabbits has caused and their expansion. It shows that nothing could, could stop them that was part of the natural landscape. And it also shows the extent of their technology and their determination to conquer the land. So onto the next page, this is a big one here, um, and we see this is the first major conflict between these two sides. So this is the fighting page. We see this is the first major battle between both the rabbits and the numbats. So if we start from the top left corner, we see the first act of rebellion. We see numbats that have taken down the pipes that we just saw in the previous page. This is showing their... Uh, their effort to get back to, uh, against the rabbits, and their, it's the first act that we see of rebellion here. As we move down, as, yeah, as we move down the page, we see cows being killed that we'd seen two pages ago, and the cutting down of a fence and multiple buildings on fire. Again, this is more rebellion, and we can see that the numbats are trying to stand up against their oppressors. Uh, as we move up and to the right, we see a collage right here of two deaths. We see the death of one rabbit and one number. This shows that at this point, we are seeing equal losses and in equal numbers. However, this will change quite quickly. The brown colour scheme of the page generally is that motif once again of the destruction that the rabbits are having on the landscape. We can see the landscape and the nice earthy colours slowly dying out. Uh, on the right side of the page, we see two line. Uh, we see two lines lining up. We see the robotic nature of the rabbits. They are all perfectly in line, and they have uh, big mechanical uh, beasts behind them. And then we see the numbats up the top using only spears and not in nice straight lines, but instead in a more um, bunched up battle formation. We also see the motif of the robotic uh, rabbits in how they line up perfectly, and we also see that all of their eyes have been replaced with clocks which we'll talk more about later. We finally see uh, on their guns, the, uh, the anaphoristic statement, sorry, the aphorism, might equals right, which again, I will explore more later on another page. So in terms of the textual analysis on this page, the text is fairly empty, but there is still some here. So sometimes we had fights is very, very euphemistic language. It severely downplays the severity of these fights uh, uh, from the numbats perspective, as well as this, the statement, there were too many rabbits, um, uh, which is down in the bottom corner, downplays the scale of rabbits and the destruction that they have caused to the numbats. So that's most of it for that page. In the middle, which I didn't really touch on that much, there's just more fighting from both sides, but we see the rabbits uh, coming through there and winning. So on this next page, it's a big contrast to the previous one. Uh, it's quite a sad, fa uh, quite a sad page, and it's called, you could call it "We Lost the Fights" or the, "The Losing of the Fights" page. So if we move from the top down, the top strip we can see is completely covered in the flags. This shows uh, that the rabbits have now taken complete ownership of the land in their eyes, and they're using these flags here to demonstrate that. The blue sky is completely replaced, and has been rep uh, and has been replaced with the brown again, a symbol of the destruction of the land. The camera is up here, as well as the man watching the chained up numbats down here, show the sign that these people are always being watched and that there is an idea that they are going to be inherently badly behaved, which is why they must be watched. And so we see again this symbolic tear, and down the bottom we see the numbats which have been chained and numbered, showing ownership. This is reminiscent of slavery and shows the freedom that they had lost. Um, and then this, the whole rest of the page is uh, filled with this motif of the dead numbats. It's the curled up ones that we saw in the cave on the first page, which shows the sheer scale um, of this destruction. So again, in the text, the, na the language we lost the fights is extremely euphemistic. It's the only language on the page, and it severely downplays the destruction caused by the loss of these fights. As we see in the rest of the page, the amount of numbats that have died, um, and just saying we lost the fights makes that sound uh, far calmer than it actually is. 
So onto this page, which you could call the agricultural page or the agriculture technology or something like that. This one doesn't have all that much on it, but it is an important uh, page to look at. So visually, we have the salient image, which is this big central um, tractor made to look robotic like, uh, like the sheep and the rabbits that we saw. Um, so they are positioned to appear bigger, that's why they're right in the middle of the page. And this one on the left, which actually is one of the tractors, sometimes people miss that a bit. Uh, so yeah, that is one of the tractors, and so they're positioned there to uh, look much bigger. So we see multiple motifs here. We see native animals fleeing, so we see the birds up the top there, and the mice. As I've explained before, that symbolises how they are inherently afraid of danger and how they're fleeing away. We see the smokestacks up there on top of the tractors as well as up on top of the hill. Uh, this is showing the impacts on the land. We also see the flag motif in how uh, the ground has been cut up there, showing the physical manifestation of their impact on the land. And finally, the repetition of strange and unnatural colours. We see very dark grass down the bottom and weirdly orange uh, and uh, very uncomfortable looking colours of everything else on the page. In terms of the textual analysis, we see... Uh, they ate our grass and they and we used here uh, shows the ownership of the trees and the grass and the land I um, mean then calling and then on the other side we see they chopped down, down They chopped down our trees and scared away our friends calling them friends shows uh, the native animals fleeing um, and shows the connection to the land So on to the next page. This is a big page here. There's not all that much analysis there, but it is a big uh and quite emotionally charged page. This can either be called the They Stole Our Children page or something like the Stolen Generation page. So visually, uh, this, the rabbit at the front is the salient image creating a vector across the page with his offer gaze. It's, ca uh, it's causing us to look down and read all this text. Uh, these pages resemble bureaucracy, these ones right here, as we can see that how the rabbits work is they make sure that everything is in writing to legalise it. Um, and it shows a gap in the communication because the numbats for centuries had never used any sort of writing or legal system like this. And so it almost shows how the rabbits are taking advantage of the numbats and are sort of saying, well, we have written this down, so it must be allowed. The ink on the page and uh, what we can see dripping down off this quill here, it resembles blood, potentially the blood of numbats. Um, and we see a surreal depiction of the stolen generation. This is a big part of this page. Tan himself believed that it would be uh, incredibly inappropriate for him to depict a more realistic version of the stolen generation because it's such a politically charged issue and it would be an injustice to the indigenous, uh, indigenous people of Australia. Um, so we see we see the, the sheer scale of this event with all of these numbats in the sky as well as the parents down the bottom who are begging and who are desperate to have their children returned. As well as this, the fact that the numbats are attached to kites shows the disconnection from the land that they now get, obviously because they are up in the sky. So the textual analysis here, we see that this is written as and stole our children with gaps in between. This is unlike the text on any other page and it's done to create a reading path that makes you take in each word one at a time. Uh, as well as this, this is very euphemistic um, and it seems fairly calm about the idea of having their children taken. Um, and this, po this page is designed to evoke an emotion and challenge our opinion. So on the next page here, this is the fifth page of the second half of the book. Uh, we see four major motifs on this page. This page you can probably see is completely different to all the other ones in terms of the colour scheme mainly. So in terms of, sorry, we actually see six motifs on this page. I underestimated it. Uh, so firstly, we see the smokestacks. I'll go through these fairly quickly. We can see down the bottom here, rows and rows and rows of smokestacks. This shows the pollution of the land uh, and the impact that it's having on the land uh, and the impact that the rabbits have themselves. Secondly, we see the motif of clocks, which I'll now explain. I've mentioned it a couple of times throughout the video, but there is essentially a clock on every single building here. This shows the need for efficiency and a rigid time system that the rabbits have. They want to get everything done as quickly as possible, no matter what it does to the land or the people. Uh, as well as this, we see um, a third motif of having wheels as feet. I'll bring this in closer, but it might be a bit hard to tell. All of the rabbits almost in this image have their feet replaced with wheels. Again, this, this shows the efficiency that they're looking for and how they really want to get around as quickly as possible. Uh, so the fourth one that we see here is the flag seen on the ball held by uh, the statue here, as well as up here in the, in the light 
posts and the power lines. And I think especially with this statue, it's very important here that that flag is there because it's showing that they are proud of their colonial past and that they admire it, which is why they're putting a statue. Uh, so the fifth motif here that we see uh, is a color shift. So as we can see, this page is almost entirely black, white, gray, and brown, which we have not seen anywhere else. This again is a physical manifestation of the devastation of the land. It is crazy to see how dark it is now all gotten and how far it's strayed from those earthy colors that we saw at the beginning of the book. Finally, we see the aphorism, might equals right. This is our sixth um, motif. And as I explained before, it's basically saying uh, to the rabbits um, that because they are stronger or more technologically advanced than the numbats, they can essentially do whatever they want and take over whatever they want because they have the right according to the fact that they have the might. Um, again, at the top of the page, we see an exaggerated version of uh, this impact on the land. We see the sky being physically sucked in by pipes, which appear to be fueling machinery. This, uh, this again shows, shows this, uh, yeah, the sky being taken away and replaced with polluted sky. Uh, finally, we see a contrast to the utopian view seen on the page, and we remember those rabbits' plans from earlier with a golden sky and everything looking all nice. Uh, we can see quite clearly here that that has not happened and that they have failed in this and it, that instead they've ended up with a black and white version of it uh, with far more pollution. Um, and so also down here we see a protester holding a sign that says think. Essentially this protester is asking people to, to think and to look at what the impacts they have, what are the impacts that they have had on the numbats uh, and, their, and their land. And this is quite important uh, for how the book continues. So again, we see on this page there are far less numbats than there are rabbits. I mean, we can see this is almost like a cityscape, and we can see that the entire bottom area of the book is dominated by the feature of rabbits. Uh, we do see a couple of numbats, however, in the bottom right corner. However, they do appear to be uh, potentially homeless, and there are some bottles there, again, showing the impact of alcoholism on the indigenous population. We see one more contrasting image, which is this yellow flower right here. It's quite hard to see but it contrasts with that black and white. And we see a child uh, pointing to it, creating a vector, as well as with his offer gaze, causing us to look down at it. And this can symbolize, depending on how you want to look at it, at how the younger generation are more attuned to the fact that the environment needs our help and to the fact that uh, there were significant wrong wrongs done to the indigenous population of Australia by the white settlers. So finally, on the textual analysis of, of this page, there's really not that much here. But we have rabbits, 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 then rabbits on the second line and rabbits on the third line. So the text here says rabbits, 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 millions and millions of rabbits. Everywhere we look, there are rabbits. The repetition of rabbits show this, shows just the, the sheer scale uh, of the number of rabbits in how it's repeated. So onto this uh, next page, which if I'm not mistaken, is the third last page. Yes, so we see... Uh, this is a very dark and dreary page. Uh, it's the one where we see the final effect of the environmental degradation on the land. So the sky is now completely bro uh, brown as well as the ground. And as I just said, it's the final result of the environmental degradation. Uh, the scale of these pipes is seen. So these pipes are essentially uh, spilling out potentially sewage or other forms of pollution. And the scale that it's seen is how they're in a perfectly straight line. This creates a vector into nothingness, essentially showing how this uh, destruction and these pipes go on almost infinitely. Um, and so we see a, ra a rabbit up in this wall, though, here, which is one sign potentially of optimism, depending on how you look at it. So the rabbit in the wall appears to be trying to reach out uh, to repair a broken relationship. However, the social distance uh, between this rabbit and the number down here, which I'll talk about in a second, shows how far uh, the rabbit will have to go to try and repair this relationship. The rabbit also appears to now be interested in this land, which would be quite good because it would again symbolize how we're starting to sort of catch on to what we've done to the land. Uh, as well as this, the number, this number down here unfortunately appears to be dead, if not almost dead, and it resembles the fossils from the beginning of the book, um, which shows that not only has this now affected the land, but it has potentially now killed numbats as well. So in terms of the textual analysis, the language, again, is quite euphemistic. It states, the land is bare and browned, and the wind blows empty across the plains. Bare and empty are very harsh words to use this, and they're very, 
they're very bland. They do show that they're that they're empty in in their words, and it shows that all of the life that used to be in the land has been taken away. As well as this, the language uh, has gone away from the we and our, showing ownership uh, by the numbats that we'd seen on the previous pages, to more of an omniscient narrator. And an omniscient narrator is essentially a narrator that knows everything at all times. Uh, and it, it actually makes it hard on this page to see which perspective this text is from. Uh, so that's everything for that page. We have two more to go, and then we'll be all done. So this page, again, quite different to the last ones. Completely black, other than a few things. There's not all that much uh, to analyse on this page, but the fully black page sort of shows the lack of remaining things. Uh, it shows that the rabbits have essentially destroyed almost everything. We see the motif again of the birds that are fleeing, uh, that are fleeing away. They are far from both, this is an important thing to note, but they are far away from both the number and the rabbit. However, we can see that they are flying towards the number, which shows more that they're flying towards their sense of safety. Uh, the rabbit at, and the number are the same size in this image, showing the equality that we finally get here, because they're both in a similar situation, which I'll explore more on the next page. The rabbit is looking towards the earth, as we see here, which is showing a new connection to this earth before it's, uh, before it's taken away and before it dies. Um, and then the number looks up with an offer gaze towards the, uh, towards the birds, almost as though it's looking towards the future. So in terms of textual analysis on this page, the repetition of where. So to read the text, it states, Where is the rich, dark earth, brown and moist? Where is the smell of rain dripping from the gum trees? Where are the great billabongs alive with long-legged birds? The repetition of this where and these rhetorical questions um, make us question the purpose of colonisation. As well as this, one side of the text is white and the other side is brown to represent the two pages that it's on, which shows that both sides, both the numbats and the rabbits, are now in the same situation and they're both uh, asking the same questions. So we have one more page right here, which is this final page. Um, and this page can just be called the closing page. And basically, it's got sort of a symbolic tear again, but it's not really a tear. It's a rectangle in the middle of the page, which shows a snapshot of uh, uh, a snapshot of what has happened. Uh, the real destruction is much larger, um, and the black around that snapshot also s shows the darkness surrounding them. The rabbit and the numbat are equal in size, which I've said again is a motif for when they're equal in size, it shows the equality, but when the size is distorted, it shows that the rabbits are far bigger and more powerful. Um, and so we can see through this equality in size that they're both now in the same situation. The natural stars that we see up the top are, are contrasted with the rubbish and pollution at the bottom of this frame that are, that's on the ground. Um, and in the middle of the page, we see what is left of the great billabong, which we can see on these end papers. And we can see that it's now just a puddle. So in terms of the textual analysis, it says, who will save us from the rabbits? The word save shows hope that they still can be saved. And the word us represents all of the victims of the rabbits, which isn't just the numbats, it's all of the animals and the land and even the rabbits themselves. Finally, this is a rhetorical question showing that they are still looking for an answer. So that's the end of the book. I have some final notes just to conclude uh, about some of the concepts from the book. So one topic that is important here is, is this uh, ending po uh, optimistic or pessimistic? You can view, view this from either way, but in my opinion, I believe that this uh, is an optimistic, optimistic ending, and I'll explain why. So I believe that this, uh, this ending is optimistic because we see finally that the numbats and the rabbits are of the same size and of the same number, showing that they are now both in the same situation and they're having to deal with these problems together, which will get them to work together and work through this. Also, the statement, who will save us from the rabbits, includes the word save, which means that there still is an option for them to be saved. Finally, some example ideas about the book. So this is just some quick sentences on what the rabbit says about different concepts. So firstly, on the idea of change, I said the rabbit articulates the dangers of change and the impacts that it has on the culture, land and peoples that came before. On the idea of colonization, so that, sorry, just to explain first, these are all major themes that the rabbits has, and this is just a short sentence to explain what it says about them. So on the topic of colonization, the rabbits shows us the harms that colonization has on the indigenous culture and land, despite the pride and admiration shown by the rabbits to their colonial attitudes. 
On the topic of environmental degradation, the rabbits explains the impacts that a lack of care and communication can have on an environment when foreign powers intervene in an unknown landscape. Oppression uh, is the next topic, and the rabbits demonstrates the brutality of oppression under rulers with complete disregard for the safety and survival of those under its rule. The second last one I have here is the technological process, uh, sorry, progress. And so the rabbit shows the dangers of the technological progress because of its ability to be used to harm people and land. And through its use, the rabbits have the power over all. Finally, the idea of cultural differences. The rabbits demonstrates the harms that occur when cultures clash and differences in language, culture, and ideals cause major disparity in the treatment of others and the land. So that's all I have time for today on The Rabbits by Sean Tan and John Marsden. Hope you enjoyed this analysis. It was pretty detailed. And so if you can take away any of this, it'll be really helpful in your understanding of the book. Uh, this has been Jezza on, on The Rabbits. Hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a like and then subscribe if you want to. Sorry, I know it's annoying when people ask, but we'll have loads more videos coming out soon on any aspects of di lots of different subjects. Um, and if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and I'll try and respond to them as quickly as possible. Thank you.